Reno is the county seat of Washoe County, Nevada. The city has a population of about 218,000 and is the fourth most populous city in Nevada. It sits in a high desert valley at the foot of the Sierra Nevada. Reno is known as the biggest little city in the world. As early as the 1850s, a few pioneers settled in the Truckee Meadows, a relatively fertile valley through which the Truckee River made its way from Lake Tahoe to Pyramid Lake. Gold had been discovered in the vicinity of Virginia City in 1850 and a modest mining community developed, but the discovery of silver in 1859 led to unearthing of the Comstock Lode. Nevada is still the third largest gold producer in the world after South Africa and Australia. In January 1863, the Central Pacific Road had begun laying tracks east from Sacramento, California, eventually connecting from, with the Union Pacific Railroad at Promontory, Utah. Once a railroad station was established, the town of Reno officially came into being on May 9, 1868. Reno is home to a variety of recreational activities in the summer. Reno locals can be found near three major bodies of water, like Tahoe, the Truckee River, and Pyramid Lake. Skiing and snowboarding are among the most popular winter sports. Reno has five sister cities, Yellowknife, Canada, Hatsor, Israel, Dinostia, Spain, Udon Thani, Thailand, Taichung, Taiwan, and Shenzhen, China. Okay. Welcome to Reno, Nevada. Well, first you should go on to the wildlife that's just beyond the city borders, or even inside it, you should go to mountains, go walking in the parks or whatever, because it's really beautiful. Also, you should go visit the Bath Center in the University of Nevada, Reno, because that's very unique. Being green means that we should be in touch with our environment, so that we should recycle, we should conserve, we should try not to waste things, and above all, it means appreciating nature and observing its quality. If I had an unlimited budget and could travel anywhere in the world, I would travel to the country of Georgia, which is northeast of Turkey. I would go there because of its unique culture, distinct language, and above all, its pretty scenery and wildlife. Besides Georgia, Vanuatu would also be a fun place to travel to as well, because although it is very mountainous, its islands are quite small and there are many languages spoken there. Charge of the world for a day. Um, I would do many things, but the first thing I would do was would be to um, preserve a lot of languages, to send a bunch of languages out to document a bunch of languages, because although it seems like languages are pretty well documented, they actually aren't, because only about two-fifths of the languages in the world today um, have even a Bible translated into them. So there is a lot of languages that need more work to be done on them. Uh, this, um, besides, all languages are directly linked to cultures, and so if you don't preserve them, you can kind of destroy the culture as well as losing valuable linguistic knowledge. But also, I would um, try to get a bunch of people to get along with each other. Like, I would try to make Israel and Palestine get along with each other and form separate countries and all that. My main study technique for the National Geographic Bee is reading Lonely Planet or any other brand, um, travel books, because they tell me a lot about the history of certain places, as well as telling me about the cuisine, practical, um, practical things that you have to know when you go to them, climate, temperature, and all sorts of things like that. They can also tell you about distinct regions and the things that you should do when you're in a different region. So although it may seem a bit impractical, usually they have maps inside them, which also helps as well. Hey, National Geographic! Did you know that the country which has the highest language density is Vanuatu, with about 15 square miles per language? Did you know that?